everyone. Welcome to the Cessna 310. We're just flying along here on what was supposed to be a fantastic review video of the aircraft, but unfortunately, due to a bunch of audio problems, none of that's worked. So instead, I'm going to take a look at something else that's occurred with the airplane. As uh, many of you will probably know, we've done a lot of work to the aircraft recently uh, to get it in good flying condition and uh, we've had a lot of success with that after a lot of hard work and we've been able to enjoy some really fantastic flying over this last summer. Unfortunately, a year ago we were in a much different situation with the airplane um, and I don't think I'm exaggerating to say a life or death situation with the airplane when we had a wire strike while landing at an airport in uh, Quebec. And so today we're going to take a look at that, what happened, the damages it caused, and some of the uh, consequences of uh, that event. On the 7th of November of 2022, at approximately 15.35 Zulu, I struck and broke a power line while on approach to runway 31 at Charlie Mike Lima 8 in Quebec. Uh, at the time of the uh, landing, uh, winds uh, reported at Montreal nearby were 250, 25 gusting 30 knots, and my crosswind calculations for landing on runway 31 were a uh, 19 knot gusting 23 headwind and a 16 gusting 19 crosswind. So let's take a look and see what happened. So the reason to travel to this airport was because we were looking at an aircraft, Cherokee 180, that was for sale. And that's where the aircraft was kept. Uh, so we'd been in chat with the uh, owner of the airplane about coming and, and looking at it. We had uh, looked at the Canadian Flight Supplement and had had a thorough brief on what to expect at the airfield. A gentleman that was flying out with me was a student pilot and being an instructor, and uh, I ultimately ended up doing some of his flight training. I took some extra time to show him a number of items, including the weight and balance, how to calculate that and complete it, and also how to go over the um, flight supplement and look for particulars on the airport. Um, in the flight supplement, uh, there are a caution section uh, for lit and unlit wind turbines around the airport, and also uh, it talks about power lines crossing the approach path of runway 31, 1400 feet from the displaced threshold. The uh, runway is itself indicated as uh, 3,000 feet in length and the displaced uh, threshold on runway 31 would be 600 feet as noted. So that leaves us with 2,400 feet of runway to land on which is not too tight for the 310 but it's certainly getting on the shorter side of things. And uh, that's where some of the problems obviously started, was some of the errors in the CFS and what was actually found on the ground. As I mentioned earlier, winds were fairly strong, with a fairly good crosswind component on the day of arriving at the airport. And with that in mind, and the gusts and turbulence that were around, I had opted to do a flap 30 landing rather than 45 because of the crosswind component. So I didn't want to leave any runway unavailable and I wanted to land right at the displaced threshold as marked on the ground. Now arriving at the airport I did an overhead procedure, crossed over 500 feet above looking for obstacles, pointing out the power lines that were marked on the road and looking at the wind turbines in the area. We descended down to circuit altitude, crossed back over the field and then joined the uh, downwind again looking for obstacles. Now, I admitted doing a low pass down the runway uh, at low altitude, and this was for a couple of reasons, which with hindsight don't seem so great. But one, it's a published airport with notifications of wires uh, marked along the highway and the wind turbines pointed out. Two, I'd already crossed the airport twice, once at 1500 AGL and a second time at 1000 with a student pilot and two licensed pilots, myself included, in the aircraft looking for obstructions and obstacles. And three, given the conditions, the turbulence, the bumps and everything else, it was becoming rather unpleasant to fly and there was really no reason not to just continue with the landing, which is what I opted to do. So 
Continuing with the landing, um, normal approach speed for normal operations would be 95 miles an hour for the 310. Uh, you can certainly land it slower than that for a short field, but gusting winds, crosswinds, turbulence are going to change that. I actually got the stall horn to squawk on final with 30 flaps at about 95 or 100 miles an hour. So I, I lowered the nose slightly and increased the speed to 105. And, um, and that was just to provide a little more stability for the gusts. And that's the approach speed I went with for my touchdown. And again, uh, especially with 30 flaps and a little more airspeed, I'm not leaving any runway behind. I'm going to land right at that displays threshold. So on short final, um, just coming up over the field, and we get an almighty bang. Wow, that's a real shock. What's going on here? So my first thought actually was that the bang was from an issue in the gear. I felt it in my feet and my mind immediately went to the undercarriage is broken. I'm thinking micro switch is gone and the gear motor has just overrun and broken the undercarriage. That's what I thought. You know, that big motor underneath and just behind me had just snapped and twisted and the motor had driven around and broken the, the linkages in the gear. And so I'm imagining in my head all this landing gear now with side braces not locked and, and broken torque tubes and just you know complete pandemonium is going on so i don't want to land like that so i apply full power i call the overshoot i start climbing away i reached for the gear lever and i decided to leave it there i checked myself and thought no if you think the gear is broken how about you don't retract the gear and then my next sort of thought was, okay, well, if the gear is broken, you know, what are we doing now? Are we burning off fuel? Are we going somewhere else? Let, let's see if we can find out a little more what's happening. And uh, I've got three, four mirrors, actually, um, to check gear positions and have a look. So I'm thinking I'll climb up a bit. I'll get a good look at the undercarriage and figure out, you know, is anything broken or loose or, or moving around? My model of 310, I only have one down light. Um, for all the micro switches. So I did have the one green for down. I climb out from the airport and I get a secondary very large bang. This brings my attention to the right engine and propeller, at which point I notice that the spinner looks like it's completely coming apart. So now my thought changes to, oh, okay, I've had a spinner bulkhead failure and the uh, right spinner is coming apart and that was the bang? Which ultimately kind of doesn't really pay, make sense of why I felt it in the undercarriage and the floor, but I definitely just felt that bang, heard that bang in the nose and a little bit in the floor, but slightly different. So now that my attention is there, I can see the gears down. Uh, I'm checking the mirrors as best I can in the turbulence, but everything looks down there. And I decide to wheel the airplane around. I reduce the RPMs, and I'm going to come in for a landing because I can see bits coming out of the spinner and hub and everything else. We're, we're just going to land this thing on the ground. And I do. I make a nice landing on the runway, turn around, taxi back in. No problems at all there. And it's not until I get out of the airplane with it shut down and get around to the front that I realize we have struck a wire and we've caused a huge amount of damage to the airplane. Now, a couple of really alarming things happened while on the ground and checking out the damage. Obviously, some people showed up because the power had gone out because I'd just flown through the um, power line that was supplying them with power, and a couple of people were not very happy about that. Within a few hours of hitting said power line, the uh, electrical company had shown up and restrung the wire right across the runway, which was incredibly infuriating. And a few ground uh, observations, sort of empirical observations made by myself uh, and uh, my father, realized that the uh, displacement on the runway despite being noted in the flight supplement as 600 feet, is only about 300 to 350 feet. And the distance from the displaced threshold uh, to, the, to the wire was only about uh, 300 feet more than that. So this wire was 600 feet away from the displaced threshold of the runway, not 1,400. Um, 
and it was strung between poles that were bringing power down to the airport property and hangars and everything else. And then there was another set of poles on the other side of the airfield taking power into a, a, another um, property that was adjacent to it and being developed. So I'm not really sure why this wire got strung across there, but it had, and we found it. Um, needless to say, a lot of damage to the airplane and a long time getting it repaired. It was um, sort of over seven months of work and getting parts together and getting spinners from Hartzell that then they actually made wrong and didn't fit the airplane and getting props sent out and repaired and undercarriage fixed and gear swung and checked and so initially I was obviously very hard on myself and pretty despondent about uh, what had occurred and a few things came to mind um, one it's too bad again I didn't have the videos rolling so almost filmed something cool but didn't but on a more serious note, too, I was actually going to take a Beach Musketeer on this trip and change to the 310 last minute due to the distance and, and, and just wanting to be more comfortable. Um, the Musketeer needed flying, but not an appropriate trip for it. And I think had I taken the Musketeer and hit that wire, landing at an approach speed 15 to 20 miles an hour slower and 2,000 pounds lighter, it wouldn't have broken that wire and we would have snagged it and got dumped on our heads on the nose of the airplane and it probably would have killed us. Two, I actually did everything really that you're supposed to do and we still got bit. And when we talked to the Transportation Safety Board in, uh, in Montreal about the incident, there'd been some other issues from that airport and apparently, then talking with Transport Canada, the airport had even been told it couldn't operate with that wire there. And looking back at CFS information, there'd been a lot of changes to the publications and what was going on. And the aftermath was basically that uh, TSB went and measured it and they left a little report on what the distances were and things like that. The flight school that was there was then told they couldn't operate and the airport was told they couldn't operate. And very quickly after that, within sort of six weeks or so, the wire was buried and removed so that operations could continue. And interestingly enough, the wires that I believed were 1,400 feet away from the threshold of the runway and marked in the CFS as being alongside the road that runs by it, they're obviously still there, and here we are over a year later, and the CFS hasn't been adjusted in any way, shape, or form. And that proves to me that the wire that I hid was not noted in that CFS. Everyone knew about it, transport knew about it, the flight school knew about it, the airport knew about it, but no one marked it, no one said anything, no one actually, you know, did their due diligence, and uh, all it took was me arriving in a slightly faster, larger aircraft with a slightly shallower approach, and making sure I didn't waste any of that runway, and I hit the thing. Hit it with the gear, and again, very lucky I wasn't a few feet lower and it came into the windshield, but very lucky to get away with it. So that was my saga there, and uh, I guess that's a really good reason for being extra careful with the precautionary, because uh, those wires are pretty much impossible to see. Anyway, stay safe everyone, happy tailwinds, get out there and get some flying done, and watch out for those obstacles.